Hey guys, welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. So, Meatloaf 98. Only two more to go before 100 episodes of Meatloaf. Um, I threw out the. Um, I asked for some suggestions last week on what you guys would like to see for the 100th episode, and uh, some ideas came through. Um, I thought about doing a live thing, but uh, my bandwidth here in this building is just absolutely terrible. So it would just really be a difficult thing to do, uh, a live feed where... Uh, so, getting back to what I was thinking, um, uh, I want to do a question and answer session, I think. So, uh, I said, oh hey, that'd be fun with a live feed. Uh, but then I looked at my... Uh, my uh, upload speed here and it's just not going to fly with uh, YouTube. Anyway, what I can do is um, you guys can uh, start throwing uh, questions that you'd like to hear Mr. Ox or Tom answer. Um, you know, how'd you get started in trade? Uh, what's your favorite tool? You know, those kinds of things and, um, and I thought we'd do that and uh, you know, I'll just print a bunch of them out and uh, you know, make a nice episode out of it and uh, you know, and when we do that, if we are talking about favorite tools or something, you know, I'll go get it and we can look at it and uh, do that kind of a thing. So uh, that's, uh, that's my best guess right now of how the 100th episode is going to be. So uh, if you got some questions, throw them up in the comments and I'll start printing them out and I'll get a nice list of, uh, of good questions. Um, so for those of you that want to meet Mrs. Ox, not going to happen. So uh, just forget about that, okay? So <laughs> she does not want to be on camera. So uh, that's just uh, not happening. So anyway, we got some uh, flea market finds, uh, a little viewer appreciation stuff. Um, let's see, what else? Um, oh, and I'm going to answer a couple of comments by showing some things. So let's get cracking here. Let me uh, get my apron on and uh, let's go look, and look at some neat stuff. All right, so this is uh, this week's stuff here. Uh, some flea market. We got some viewer appreciation. Um, let's uh, let's start going through it here. We'll do the let's do the big things first. Um, I picked up another one of these another one of these uh, 7-Eleven P Tig hoods. Um, this one has not really seen uh, seen much use. You know the. The cover plate's a little crispy, but you know that's a that's a kind of a maintenance item there. Um, you can't buy this particular one anymore, so I've now collected a couple of them. So uh, I got a you know basically got a lifetime supply now. You can still get the headgear because all the Huntsman hoods use that. So now, guys, I'm old school. I, I like these uh, these fiber hoods. They're nice and light. Um, I like the headgear. I don't like the. Uh, um, you know, the enveloping uh, um, um, electronic type ones, you know, they cover your whole head up and you're, you're basically in a tunnel. This one, uh, you can talk and, uh, and breathe and uh, get some air in there and all that. So, uh, what is, oh, self-darkening, that's, that's what I was trying to think of. Um, also, the, the self-darkening ones, uh, I got one, uh, somebody gave me one, and you can't buy a damn magnifier for it. And when you get old, you gotta see, you gotta, you gotta get a magnifier. Anyway, five bucks for that, that was pretty good. Um, like I said, let's do the big ones first. Uh, this is the flea market find here. Uh, this is a Williams um, three-quarter drive ratchet. Uh, I think it's 32 teeth, I looked it up because I wanted to see what the handle looks like that goes in here and um, you know honestly that the handle that I saw that comes with this it's only 19 inches long which uh, let's, let's stretch that out so you guys can get a get a visual on that so it's about this long which is you know it's about 500 millimeters um, which I'm like for a three-quarter ratchet you're kidding that's that's a that's a weenie handle so uh, um, I'm probably going to make a, I'll make a cool handle for this uh, that plugs in there and uh, you know I mean this thing should be three feet long that's what I think and uh, you know the, this drive can certainly uh, handle that kind of stuff so you know the older I get the more leverage I, uh, uh, <laughs> I need. <laughs> anyway uh, ten bucks for that um, doesn't look like it's seen a lot of use and uh, might use that in some of our uh, tool torture testing, okay? So, pretty cool. Um, all right, so let's 
Um, this was a. Uh, is that the same guy? No, not the same guy. A different. Oh yeah, it was the same guy. This was the same guy. So another ten bucks got me this. It's a Hewitt uh, Index, um, and it's missing a few drills. But you know, hey, you can buy these damn things, right? It's missing a few, but all the drills are Union Butterfield, which are a nice drill. And um, you know, these are in the ones that are here are in great shape. So oh, there's a there's a little uh, reduced shank one in there. Looks like somebody turned it down. So anyway, so I'll uh, I'll refill that, uh, and uh, that's a nice little set of drills. Uh, uh, Ten bucks for that too. So uh, pretty good. All right, let me uh, shift the camera, and then we'll look at some of the the uh, uh, more interesting items. All right. So um, when I came back from the flea market, um, my neighbor came over and he knocked on my door and he says, hey, you want this thing? And uh, he was kind of waving it around and I looked at him and I go, what the hell is that initially? And then, uh, then I saw what it was because he turned it and I saw the, the oval opening and, and I said, well, let me see that. Well, it turns out that this is a, uh, a Plom Tools uh, 1429. Uh, this is a body hammer, you know, for doing uh, automotive sheet metal work. Um, and uh, it's kind of a unique one. I haven't seen one like this before. So I looked it up, and it's called, it's called a turret head pecking hammer. <laughs> turret head, that's the, this end, and this is the pecking end. So, uh, you know, like a woodpecker, right? Um, now this is a, a small oval. The, the challenge will be to find a, a fitting handle for this because the plum handles are pretty, uh, um, you know what, I'm going to go get one uh, so you can get a look at one. Alright, so here's, uh, here's a couple of plum handles here so you can kind of get a, get a visual on those. They're, they're, they're octagonal um, and uh, they char they're characteristically kind of thin through uh, through this section here, which uh, I really like. It gives a that it makes the hammer lively, okay. Um, and if you've done a lot of hammering, you'll you'll understand what I mean uh, uh, when I say that. Um, now it's really easy to screw them up. You know, you a little, you miss strike and you can you can chowder that up, and then they're then they're no good. Um, and then this is this characteristic. Uh, green paint that they put on these things it's this is what I you know when I look at a pile of hammers that's the first thing if I see that boom I immediately pick it up and see what kind of hammer it is and just uh, have a look at it but this is what this thing needs here you know some in fact that's that looks like the same eye size right there so uh, um, so I might have to carve one of those uh, just to get it right and um, make a nice handle for that. So anyway, that's a turret head pecking hammer. <laughs> Plum 1429, pretty cool. Uh, free, anyway, I, I bought him a burrito <laughs> and brought it back for him, so uh, that was a good trade. All right, so this next one here, this is from a friend of mine in, uh, in Michigan, uh, Jay Bulliard, um, and uh, he works for Ford Motor Company. And uh, he's a, uh, he does engine design and uh, um, um, pistons and uh, piston stuff like that. And uh, anyway, Jay wanted to help out with the, uh, the baby bullet build. So what he did uh, um, is he made a couple of these uh, screw retainers here. Let's see, make sure I'm, I'm in frame here. And uh, let's see, what's he say here? Here's two, vice, or two screw retainers for the vise. Uh, he made them out of stainless. Thanks for all you do and uh, for allowing me to have a small part in this build, your friend Jay Bulliard. So, uh, um, yeah, let's see, got them taped down here. Let's uh, pop them loose. Now, Jay, sorry, but we just, <laughs> we just made the damn thing. And, uh, um, you know, we just made the, uh, the brass one the other day. And, uh, uh, but that's okay. We got some spares here. We're going to end up with some, uh, some spare parts. He made two of them, so uh, like I said, you know, we're we're uh, we're getting we're getting enough of, uh, spare parts here that uh, you know we might have a good start on a a second one. So Jay, thank you very much for making those. And um, um, the hmm. Jay, where's my calipers? Uh-uh. Let's 
going on there? I think that's supposed to be an eighth of an inch thick. Hmm. Thick. 127. Uh oh, 18, 120. All right. 120. What, uh, I wonder if he. Oh, these look like they were made out of sheet metal. I don't see any. Uh, I don't see any turning marks uh, or facing marks. So uh, I'm thinking he might have made these out of sheet metal. So that would explain why it's a, they're a, a whisper thinner. Doesn't really matter. Um, it, um, the screw butts up against the back of this so uh, to open the vise. So uh, um, anyway, so Jay, thank you very much. Uh, uh, nice job there, and uh, those will go in the uh, in the baby bullet build. Okay, so this next one, this one came all the way from um, well, uh, from Australia, and uh, now it's it's kind of a funny. Uh, <laughs> It's kind of a funny town name, and I'm probably going to mess it up. Um, and so all the, all the Australians out there are probably going to get a laugh out of how I pronounce this. This comes from uh, Warnambool, Victoria, Southwest Australia. Um, Warren, Warnambool, Warnambool, Victoria, Australia. <laughs> anyway, James sent this in. Uh, he's calling it a pocket multi-tool. Um, I've actually seen these before. Let's let's pop her open here. Let's uh, get the little. Oh, I didn't see the tweezers in there before. Now this thing is actually made. Um, it's made in Germany, um, and it, it must have been you know some kind of common little uh, little pocket tool or whatever that was sold. Uh, um, and he says that this came back with. Uh, well, he doesn't know. Anyway, uh, so maybe one of our German viewers, uh, I thought he was saying that it was a World War II vintage uh, and it came back with uh, somebody that was overseas. But here's the idea here. They're slit and they, they pop in like that. And now you can, um, now you got you got some leverage on the tool there. So that's a, a little hole driller. Um, and then that's a corkscrew. Uh, let's, let's try those tweezers. Let's see how those work you know what I don't think I'm not thinking the tweezers go in there I think that's just a bonus uh, that you get a you get a little pair of tweezers because that doesn't really make any sense to me so uh, uh, and there's a eye poker outer there uh, looks like these are these are a little chewy there they probably need a little dressing so anyway if any of our German viewers know anything about these this it's made out of brass um, you know, it's uh, it's kind of interesting. It's nickel plated uh, brass. I don't know. Not, 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 there's no maker name on here. It's got uh, four star or three stars on it. Germany. Yeah, I don't know. I've seen these before, so maybe uh, one of our German viewers will chime in and uh, um, and comment on that. Anyway, James, thank you very much, and uh, hope you got a kick out of my pronunciation, so uh, you can have a laugh at my expense. So thank you, my friend. Thanks for sending that in. All right, so this next one, uh, this comes to us from uh, my friend in uh, Arizona, uh, Gordon Melby, and he's in Green Valley, Arizona, down near the... Uh, um, the observatory that I went to uh, down there to install some equipment. So uh, I met him in person and we went to the Titan Missile Museum together and, uh, and checked out some old, some old uh, 60s and 50s and 60s missile gear. Anyway, Gordon sent me uh, some goodies here for the show and uh, this thing's kind of cool. Uh, this is a neat little, little kind of a adjustable parallel wrench here which is kind of cool. And it's got some serrations on there. It's marked uh, S S U L. That's the only markings on it that I can see here. Um, this jaw is is spring loaded here. There's, in fact, you can see it. There's a little spring in there, pulling it at an angle. Um, but it's actually surprisingly smooth, and it locks up really nice. So uh, now, looking at this, I don't think this jaw is particularly hard because it's kind of shroomed over there a little bit um, but it it's just got a pleasant feel to it um, so that's kind of neat never seen one like that before um, might have been chrome plated huh yeah I don't know. 
kind of neat, huh? So it opens up uh, 800 thousandths or 20 millimeters roughly. Um, it's kind of skinny, it's neat. I don't know, so hang that from your belt when you're riding your motorcycle. So uh, anyway, Gordon, thank you very much. That's pretty cool. And he sent this book along too, uh, which is kind of a, it's a, it's a reprint of some old catalogs and um, um, Buck, Buck and Hickam tools. Let's, uh, let's pop it open, let's take a look. Uh, the camera will, will adjust here reasonably quickly. Um, see, we get some funny lathe tools with some uh, mandrels. Let's just kind of, we'll just flip through it. So we get some acne. The, the spine's a little, a little chewy here, so uh, uh, bear with me there. Oh, actually, you know what? Um, I, I flipped through this, and there was. I, probably, I should have. I should have bookmarked it. There's some old, uh, some old tap wrenches there. Kind of neat stuff. Um, just kind of popping through here, looking at it. All right, got a cool little, uh, cool little angle gauge there. Uh, does a million and one things there. Yeah, you see that the that the the glue backing is uh, is dying there. So there's a bevels. That's a draftsman's bevel there. Kind of neat, uh, kind of neat stuff here. I just love looking at these old catalogs like this. It's kind of neat. Um, so these are older starets here. They have um, this kind of. Um, herringbone finish on them here. That's an older, older style stare at there. Um, solid squares. Yeah, just uh, k kind of uh, old, neat tools, right? Who, do who doesn't like that, right? I mean, some fixed gauges. So these are, uh, these are snap gauges for different gaps. Um, so you can, you know, so this is actually ground very precisely two inches between that for gauging shafts or the opposite of gauging a space too. You can do that or a combination, uh, combination thing here. So kind of neat. Parallels, some more gauges. So there's stuff from Pratt and Whitney in here, uh, Starrett, Brown and Sharp. Uh, yeah, Brown and Sharp. There's a bunch of, um, horizontal cutters and whatnot. Pretty cool. So Gordon, thank you very much. That's kind of a neat old book and uh, got some neat stuff in there. It's uh, It's got prices, uh, uh, but they're English prices. So it's, you know, pences and uh, pennies and weird numbers that I don't get. So pounds and pences and what's co what comes after pounds? You got pounds, something in between, and then little ones. So uh, coarse, medium, and fine. <laughs> anyway, Gordon, thank you very much. That's uh, that's cool. All right, so we're over here on the lathe. Um, somebody, uh, a viewer, had asked about the uh, this arm that I'm using here um, for my camera, and um, so there it is. I'll just kind of demo it. So I built this part here that comes off of that pipe to isolate this the vibration uh, of the lathe from the camera, which uh, is pretty annoying for viewers, I think. Um, but anyway, I got this, uh, it's a Manfrotto arm, it's a number 244, uh, and it's got this universal clamp on it, but it's really like a gigantic Noga mount, okay, so it operates the same way, and then you can, you know, you can put it any which way you want, and, uh, and go from there, so, you know, I typically shoot something like this, um, so that the camera's out of my way, but I can get in nice and tight, and, Look at things. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. You guys can see everything. And then uh, you know I can push this out of the way or hinge it around however I want. Um, but this works pretty good. And um, and this you can take it off. And this thing will clamp to the edge of a table. It'll clamp on a, a round bar like that. It'll do all kinds of stuff. Um, they don't give them away, but they're really nice. A friend of mine had one, and I went, Oh my God! Look at that thing. It's a giant Noga. So uh, I bought one. And so you get the arm, and I think you got to buy this separately. I don't quite remember now. It's been a while. Uh, B and H Photo sells them. Um, you know, it's it's a hundred bucks, something like that. It's a hundred dollar bill to get it, uh, but it works really good. Um, you can mount a pretty heavy camera out there, 
and it, um, not that that's a heavy camera, so, uh, uh, and uh, position it anywhere you want for weird stuff like this, so. Manfrotto 244. So, I made a comment, I think, in a video that, uh, um, you know, these mag base uh, Noga arms, they don't stick to wood, damn things. So, and, you know, I like to get them out of the work area, you know, so you don't bump into them and stuff. And, uh, but, ouch, um, I would really like to have it here. So, you know, I think I casually mentioned them in a video. And um, a sharp-eyed viewer said, hey, why don't you put a piece of steel underneath your rubber mat there, and, uh, and then you can actually uh, um, snap your, uh, your magnet. Um, to the steel. Well, I said, now there's a good idea. Dang it, man. And, uh, you know, it didn't even occur to me, right? Um, so I tried it, but the rubber is just thick enough that uh, it knocks uh, the magnetic force down enough that it doesn't hold. So, you know, the magnetic force drops off by the cube of the distance, um, or it might be the, um, to the fourth. I think it's the cube of the distance, so uh, it anyway drops off very quickly. Okay, um, so I think what I'm going to do is, and I got this sheet metal. This is left over from the Bar Z bash. I, I had a couple of these left over. This feels like about the the right spot right here, you know, for for stowing. It actually just kind of stays, but uh, I think I'm going to screw it down. Um, you know, it's a, it's out of the way of the action here, and um, um, but it's 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 close enough at hand that that I can grab it easily, and it's not in the way of the drawers of the toolbox over here either. So, uh, so anyway, what we're gonna do, or what I'm gonna do, and you're gonna watch and comment vigorously, I'm sure. Um, we'll uh, we'll pop some holes in uh, in here like so, and like so, and then we're going to screw this down and we're just going to test drive this and uh, see, if that's the, uh, see if that's the right spot for this thing to live. So let's go uh, pop some holes and, um, um, and screw this thing down. Alright, so I'm just doing it over here because this is a convenient uh, uh, flat surface. So these are, this is, and you guys have probably seen me use these before, but I, I don't know if I've ever talked about them. So this is a pair of dividers that I modified um, and made them into um, screw leg hermaphrodite calipers, right? So you can see one leg is one leg is longer than the other, and this is smooth on this side for catching the edge here, and then this is the scribing side. Um, what's wrong with regular hermaphrodites is their their firm joint. So when you push on them real hard, they tend to slip and splay open and uh, those dirty little birds and um, anyway um, these are you know they're fixed with a screw so let's see i not sure what's that three ace okay so and then I can set it with my uh, my scale here like this so I'm setting it for three ace about ten millimeters and uh, all I'm gonna do is just come off of the corners and put a couple of inner a couple of scribe line intersections, okay, like that. You know, we, we don't care about the uh, the center to center distance here, right? These are just mounting screws. Hopefully, I'm not blowing it here, and you guys can see it. Yeah, okay, okay. So that's you know, it's a quick way to uh, it's a quick way to uh, describe you know parallel lines. And, you know, you can drag them out as long as you want too. Uh, so you can you can you can slide down the uh, um, the whole edge if you want. But uh, I always use them or use that particular uh, particular deal for in particular for corner or holes that are off of a corner. You can just now you know they don't work great when they're uh, uh, you know when they're way the hell out there like that. So uh, they're they're for you know, I call it short range, you know, up to up to an inch or something like that is probably fine. Okay, so let's go pop some holes in there um, and then uh, uh, go from there. All right, I found some screws here. I'm going to use these little, uh, these little bugle head screws, right? Um, 
but you know, I don't have enough thickness to countersink the plate, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to punch a hole that's almost the same size as the head of this, a little bit smaller, just fall, uh, small enough, just fall enough, small enough that it doesn't fall through, okay? Um, but uh, it'll still be retained, so let's change the size here. And this is my uh, so F, be an F, that index is in, okay? And the, the punch has a little tit on it that I'm connecting on to, okay? I think. And then this is my my little stripper plate here so that it doesn't distort doesn't distort the plate. Okay? So um, if I did it all right. Okay, so you see it's basically flush, but it won't it won't come through, right? So it's kind of a phony baloney countersink, uh, if, if you want to call it that, okay? So I'm lifting it up, you know, into the punch, and then I'm bringing it down too, just so you guys uh, get the feel. Of it. Okay, let's go screw that down. All right, so we're ready. So I'm gonna um, use the uh, duress uh, ice pick method here uh, to get these started nicely. Let's see, should I do? I think I'll do these first here. So this just gives me a a nice kind of clean start um, with the screw. Like that, sweet, okay. And I chose this particular uh, uh, piece of metal because it was painted. And you guys know how much I love the paint, right? Um, whoops. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess I gotta find some bigger screws there, Bubba. Damn it. What's going on there? Yeah, it frickin' pulled it right through there. Alright, now I'm screwed, right? Maybe it's just that one screw. Oh, maybe I'm gonna get lucky here. So maybe this screw head's out of tolerance here. So, um, we'll, uh, yeah, because I measured the damn thing, so. Bad screw. Let's do another one there. Okay, it's a good screw. <laughs> All right, I gotta go. I gotta go find another screw. And you know how that goes, right? With my luck, I won't have one more that stinking screw, right? So. Like that. Okay. So that's, that's enough screws to get a test. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. See, and then I can, this is just the right spot here where I can kind of keep it out of the way and it's not going to get clobbered. All right, got to go find another screw. Um, I don't know, I'm probably going to get a million comments. What kind of ice pick is that? Um, I don't know. It's a USA one though. Made in the USA, nice wood handle, uh, aluminum cap so you can, uh, you can clobber on it and uh, uh, I don't know, I've had this a million years. So. Alright guys, thanks for watching.